are fearfully and wonderfully made and your creator thinks about you all day, every day. What a wonderful truth that gives us hope for today. And we're so glad that you're with us here on Hope Today. I'm Anna and I'm here with Sydney and Tom. Tom, tell us about what to expect today. Oh, you guys are gonna love this. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter where or how you start out in life. God has a plan and purpose for everyone. And that's the message of piano artist Kim Deerdorf, who we had on the show with us last Friday. You may have heard him. But coming up in just a few minutes, you'll get to hear the continuation of my conversation with him and how God's using his life to encourage and inspire others. Plus, you also get to hear another one of his moving piano performances. You're going to be blessed by that. We've also got a little, little like biopic of him, a little uh, like three minute video that he did of his life. So you get the, if you missed Friday, you'll get to hear the beginning part of his story. It's so powerful. You know, it's just really powerful when we hear other stories. It gives us hope. It gives us the determination to believe that God did it for them, then he can do it for me as well. So we always love to bring you encouraging and inspiring stories that you can be inspired and bring hope to your soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly, each one of us have a story. Like God has written this beautiful story for us to, to tell, to be a light and I tell you what, if you are in a dark place today, or maybe you've come out of a dark place, I mean, I just want to encourage you that so often we have to die to ourselves. We have to go through that dark time, that winter season where everything feels dead and lost, but know that springtime is coming. And when you're down in that dark place, God is working a new thing to bring you back to life again. And that's truly what we're going to see in the story today. Well, I do love people's stories. There's a, yeah. there was a praise song like 20 years ago or so that said, gathered as, as his people, we're here to seek his face. To each there is a story of his amazing grace. And I have that story. We all do. You have that story too, if you know him. Yes, we do. And now we're going to take some time to play something fall called Stump the House. Let's go. All right, here's question number one. What type of insect did John the Baptist eat in the desert? This is easy, isn't it? Locusts and honey. Locusts. Yeah. Yes. Locusts. So we got locusts. And can well. I just say our marketing director here, Crystal, when she was away yeah. at a conference, she ate locusts, like to experience the John the Baptist. I mean, <laughs> I was at that conference and I apparently oh, that's right. you were there. one of the places had those. I'm glad I didn't go by that Ooh. booth. Crunch, crunch. <laughs> Here is our second one. Which God was Paul mistaken for in Lystra? Um, Dagon? He, I don't know. He was mistaken for Hermes, Hermes. okay, uh, because he was the main speaker. They were, him and uh, the other, I forget who was with them at that time, they were mistaken for Zeus and Hermes. Wow. Uh, it was Hermes. Okay, there we go. All right. Oh, All right, yes. take that. Take that, <laughs> take that. Dave and Neil. Uh -huh. We are watching <laughs> their too. faces. We're like, ooh, he got him. He got right. him. Here's, here's the last question. What was the name of Judas Iscariot's father? Oh, wow. I don't know. You know, it's funny. I was just reading about this, but I don't remember. This is when we want to pay uh, attention to the lineage, the Judas list of names, Iscariot. probably. Uh, I have no uh, idea. Carrot. No, I, I <laughs> is carrot. Uh, no. Uh, what? Oh, my goodness. There's something in his last name there, Iscariot, that means something like Larry that. Larry just but. buzz like, are Rick upstairs no, just buzz no. us? We, just wah, buzz wah, us wah, we got it. We have no idea. We are stumped. <laughs> <laughs> Science Sorry, and Iscariot. Oh, you were on the right track though. No, I think I was on the wrong track actually. Oh. I think I jumped the track. My brain oh. jumped the track on that one. <laughs> well, hey, I'm glad you played along. Uh, right now, take a look at this video of Kim Deerdorf sharing his story. My name is Kim Deerdorf. And this is my story. I was born in Seoul, South Korea in 1964. I was found in the garbage when I was just a few days old. I was taken to the Holt Orphanage and I spent the first several weeks of my life in a hospital where they thought I had something wrong with my eyes and they thought I might be blind. 
They gave me the birth date of January 1st since they didn't know when I was born. And this is the LA airport. This is the airport that all the parents gather to fly over to Korea to adopt their children. And here they're flying from LA to Seoul. And here they arrive in Korea. And everyone's excited about meeting the children for the first time. And this is my adoptive mother and my adopted sister, Kathy. And this is my adoptive father and he was helping out at the orphanage. And during the week, they were shooting the story about the Holtz. Harry Holt dies of a heart attack. And this man who devoted his life to saving others was gone. He devoted his life to saving children. And I am one of those he saved. And here we are at his funeral in Seoul. And this is another picture of my adopted mother and my sister Kathy. And after that emotional week, all the families are excited about returning back to America to start their new lives. And everyone has a story, and this is my story. And here I am, I'm four months old and I weigh eight pounds and I've been saved twice through the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is my life and I wouldn't want any other. What a powerful story. Kim Deardorff is with us to share what God is doing in the rest of his story. Kim, thanks for coming well, back to absolutely. the show. Absolutely, it's an honor to be here. Let me ask you, you something that uh, we didn't cover last time is you're self-taught, completely self-taught as far as the piano. That's right. Um, and I think that's, a, I think that's an important thing because I don't have all the, the formal training and background and degrees to, to um, fall back on or to rest on. I have to just accept the fact that God gave me uh, the ability and a gift and a, and a wanting to learn this instrument and a willingness. And, and he really supplies all the, the power behind it. So we heard your story last time and we just saw the video. What has God done in, in 2000? You had a, a, a new direction in your life. What's God's done there? Sure, so I'd been in Florida for five years. Um, you know, every year, January 1st, my birthday. So on New Year's Day, I'd, I'd pray and ask God, well, what, what's next? What's, what, what might you be wanting me to do this year? And in 2000, I somehow I felt an overwhelming desire or uh, leading to move to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, 1987, when I was in Texas, I entered my first and only uh, um, songwriting competition. It was a national Christian songwriting competition in Estes Park, Colorado. Mm -hmm. I didn't place first, but I placed third uh, nationally and I was invited to move to Nashville in 87. So for 13 years, I'd been thinking about moving to Nashville. Okay. And over 13 years, God eventually said, you know, I think it's time to move to Nashville. And I didn't even know how or why. Yeah. So uh, what happened when you went to Nashville? What did God do? Sure. So uh, I'd spent 18 months doing freelance uh, work in Orlando and God had blessed my uh, business tremendously. I was competing against multi-million dollar production companies out of my bedroom. And so I moved to Nashville just strictly on faith and, f and God's leading. And um, I left my friends behind. I left my professional uh, uh, clients behind. I left my church family behind. Yeah, you're, like, you're like the rhinestone cowboy walking the streets, uh, uh, just looking for the opportunity there. Well, you know, it's interesting because had I moved in 87, my yeah. whole goal would have been to just become a famous songwriter. Yeah. 
in 2000, after 13 years of waiting, my, my heart's goal and desire was just to follow God's leading in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to Nashville. I called over 285 studios, producers, editors, um, video production companies. I m went to uh, all kinds of uh, industry functions. I had one day of work in 18 months. And I went through depression like I'd never gone through in my life. Mm -hmm. Nobody was calling. I'd left all my friends and my, my support, you know, people down back in Orlando. And it was just me and God. And, you know, I, I laid on the floor for like two weeks because I was just in depression. I'm thinking, well, I moved to Nashville now. What's happening? Um, a year and a half later, I get hired to be... Um, to be a teacher at the at Natural State Community College. They were f teaching the very first class in digital audio recording. I was the first teacher off of that. I was invited to train all the audio engineers at Country Music Television because wow. that was the software that they were using. Mm -hmm. At the end of that, I was invited to be the first ever uh, audio freelance engineer in country music t television history in Nashville in a city of thousands of engineers. You know, and it's just, uh, again, it's just God leading my life in a, in a very unconventional way. When I was teaching at the college, um, I didn't even have a degree. Yeah. And so that's just God opening up that opportunity. Uh, I ended up, you know, up and down financially for the next six years. Um, I found some original footage of, of uh, when my parents adopted me back in 1964. Wow. I edited it into a three minute video. I put it up on, er, real early on. Well, up that's on, what we just saw, on it, isn't on, it? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I put it up on YouTube and I finally, I started getting people writing to me from all over the world. I got invited to start uh, uh, speaking at, at conferences. My first ever conference was in Portland, Oregon. I'd never done a conf conference before. I'd never spoke before. And I, I show up in Oregon, and I find out I'm the keynote speaker for the weekend. Oh my goodness! Wow, this is a this is a, a Joseph story here, from uh, you know not having any work at all for a year and a half to kind of being just behind the scenes to teaching, to to then this. What happened with the conference? Well, you know, uh, she asked me for an outline of what I'd be speaking on. Of course, I didn't have an outline. Of course, I'd never done this before. I did three days, 90-minute talks each to high schoolers. And, you know, you, you, can, you can tell when the Holy Spirit shows up. Uh, based off that experience, I felt like, well, maybe God may be preparing me to share my testimony more. And um, so I kind of was thinking in that direction. Uh, in 2008, I'm sitting in my room. I'm two months behind on all my, all my bills. Financially, I'm, I'm really have, struggling. I was invited to Knoxville, Tennessee to um, represent Holt International, the agency that's, that I was adopted through when I was a baby. And I, I was representing them and inviting people to sponsor orphans for, uh, for their organization. I didn't even have money to travel from Nashville to Knoxville. I, I was FedExed a check of $200. I went to Knoxville. I'm sitting behind a table uh, the, that first night. And the head of the conference comes up to me and says, hey, would you share part of your story in tomorrow morning's appeal and, and help you know um, interest other people to sponsor mm -hmm. children? So I... I I met him at 10 o'clock. We walk around to the back of the auditorium. I said, uh, I also have some music CDs I brought along. He said, he, said, he said, that sounds great. He said, why don't we offer some of your CDs to the people that sponsor children? Well, I only had 110 of them left. I was two months behind all, all my bills. I just walked through a room where all the speakers had all their DVDs, videos, uh, books, and I saw stacks of money on the table. And I was, I, he was asking me to give my last 110 CDs away. And I said, you know, I'm just gonna trust God. And I, I went out and I presented my story in a way I had never presented it before. And the, and the Holy Spirit's presence was so strong. They had record number of sponsorships that weekend, more sponsorships than they'd ever had at any other event. And I was invited to uh, go on tour with them to finish out the tour. It was a group called New Song. And, and I, over the next six and a half months, I did 73 cities. You, you went from not sharing your testimony at all, not, being, not knowing what you're going to share That's hardly, right. to all of a sudden you're the main speaker for 73. They featured my story. I got to represent Holt. Um, halfway through the, the tour, uh, we were doing the Christmas segment. Uh, all the kids on my bus were, were half my age. I was 47 at the time. They were all in their 20s, and they were always encouraging 
Eddie to maybe have me uh, play some music at, one, at the program. And so he calls me up. He said, we have 15 minutes before the program. He says, can you play some music this, during Christmas? He said, what are you going to play? I said, I'm going to play Silent Night and do other songs. He says, well, I don't, want, I don't want them to get bored. And I said, well, I said, Eddie, this is, this is what I'm going to say. I said, I'm like the little drummer boy. I have one style of music. I, I, you know, I wish I had all these other styles. I'm the little drummer boy. I have one drum. I said, all I can do is, is take my one drum and place it before the Lord and ask him to bless it. And f the response was so good that he had had me play for the rest of the tour. Uh -huh. And my point is, don't ever feel limited by what God gives you, even though you don't feel it's enough. Because God can, can because it's God's interacting in what he's already done in your life that provides the platform. Provides the platform. And he did a lot in your life. So tell me now, you mentioned you were 47, so I guess you, you met Sherry along the way here, and, yeah. and, and you, you got married at this point. Well, you know, at, at 47, I was invited to talk at a small group. Uh, I, I saw this girl, she came up, and we started talking. We went on our first date four days later. Uh, we, were, we got married two months after that wow. at 47. Uh, this year is our 12th. You were making up for lost time, brother. You know, I, I will say <laughs> this year is our 12th anniversary, but what I also say is, you know, when God moves, it doesn't take a long time for him to do something. Yeah. You know, I was always lamenting that all my friends had already gotten married, had families, bought a house. And at 47, at 48, I bought my first house. I married Sherry. I inherited three beautiful, loving kids. Uh, and so in one year, I, I'd already caught up with all my friends. Wow, how about that? So let me ask you about today, right now. Yeah. What is God, how is God using your story? How is God using uh, your involvement with uh, uh, Holt or uh, how's God doing that? So in 2020, uh, um, Sherry lost her, her job and her mom on January 3rd on, on, the, fir on the same day. Wow. And we decided that we wanted us to do more ministry work. So we started a 501c3 called My Story Kim Ministries. And and it's really dedicated to me doing this, where I get to share my story, what God's done in my life, what God can do with, in anybody's life as long as they accept him into their heart and allow him to lead. And, and we partner, right now we're partnered with Holt, the agency. The, That's the agency right. that adopted you way sure. back. Right, yeah. so, so um, we, we do events and churches and conferences and I share my story and we invite people to sponsor children through Holt. So if somebody's watching and they want to sponsor a, a child right. through Holt, how do they do that? Just go to my website. It's mystorykim.com and on the first page there's, there's a whole, there's links. Where people what's, that can, involved? Can, what's that mean to a sponsor? A uh, it basically means uh, they get to go to a, 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 a web page. They have children from all over the world that they can they can select a, per, uh, a particular child uh, they provide you know food and education and, and a support a lot of these kids uh, aren't being adopted uh, currently but they're uh, needing support in foster homes and so they're able to lend help with their education and their health needs and that and kind we'll, of thing and we'll be sure to put a link on our website uh, ctvn.org to your website but I want to ask you and we'll, we'll, we're going to hear your music in just a moment. One final thing. What has God, what was the, is the one word God's given you for, to share with everyone? I think the, the key for my, in my life and in anybody's life is identity. Um, before I met the Lord, before he solidified his relationship with me, I, I was just, I didn't know who I was. I especially didn't know who I was as biologically. Um, but I didn't know who, who I was, who God made me. And so I, I think the most important thing to, to, for anybody is to learn their identity and that their identity can be uh, a child of God through Christ. That is such a good word. Uh, Kim Deardorff, thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. your, your thank story you so with much us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, powerful. I know there's a lot more to it, but I appreciate what you've been able to share with us. and. And we're going to ask you to share some music with us. And, and uh, so we're, we're going to hear from Kim in just a second. But I think it's so important for us to pause a moment and say, what is our identity? Uh, some of us who grew up in Christian homes, we struggle with our identity. We struggle with 
where is God when the things are difficult? What does God think about me? I want to tell you right now, God loves you. He's a loving Father who pours out His love upon you. And even when it's dark, and even when it seems like uh, things aren't getting through to God, He's still caring and He's still moving. Well, right now, Kim is going to share with us the song, This Is My Father's World. Kim Deerdorf said he had one drum. Like the little drummer boy, and you all know the story. What can I give to the Christ child? Well, I can give my drum, my talent, the thing I do. And that's what Kim has given to the Lord, and God is using it mightily. So what's that thing for you? Guys, I just I think about this. I think we all have that drum. We all have that thing that, we're, that God's given us a talent. Sometimes we don't recognize it. Sometimes it comes out later but we have that thing to give to the Lord. Yeah, we absolutely do. And, you know, I just love how he said, if you feel limited in what you have, like maybe you look at other people and you're like, oh, I wish I had their talent. I wish I had their gift. Like, look at all the ways that God is using them. Well, God has given each one of us a talent to use. And so our job is to search for what that is, to practice, to step out, step out of our comfort zone, try different things and see what the Lord does with it. So as you saw, Kim 
in faith he stepped out. And when we do, God is so faithful to multiply and use what he's given us. You know, Anna, when you're speaking, I just think of that scripture where the gifts of God, they're without repentance, they're irrevocable. So what he gives every one of us, whether we're in the kingdom or not, we all have a gift. But the thing is, I think it's so important with our gift, how are we going to use it? How are we going to use the things that God has given us to glorify him and to bring others to his light. And so as you're watching Kim's story, just pray that whatever gift that God has given you, no matter what it looks like, just to seek God's face and to know that you could use that to bring healing, to bring light, to bring love, to bring deliverance, to set other people's free, to bring them to Jesus. That's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, you, you said so much, Sydney, when you said that God gives each of us a, a, a gift, even if, we're, even if we don't know him. Even if we don't know him, there's gifts inside of people that they can use for good or bad. In fact, some people have used their gifts of leadership or their gifts of influence or their gifts of music or their gifts of, of whatever for wrong. But God wants to take us. One thing I love about God is when we come to him, when we come in, in humility and say, I need you in my life, Lord. Please come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. When we do that, all of a sudden he says, hey, guess what? I've put this thing inside of you. You've used it wrongly. Maybe you didn't even recognize it, but you've used it wrongly. Now, let me take that thing and let me form it with the character of Christ in it and let me use it to glorify the, uh, God and, and bring uh, life to the kingdom of God. Those things, uh, it's just an incredible, I've seen it over and over again in people's lives. Yeah, and something both of you said that I just wanna magnify is that it really is about glorifying God, that your life would bring glory to God. It's not about bringing glory to ourselves, which is why we have to trust God to develop it, to give us the opportunities to step out so today know that your life was created to glorify God. So push that fear away, step into that faith and see what God will do. You know, even we're just having this conversation, I think no matter what the gift is, no matter what he has given us, I think it is so important for us to be a living sacrifice. That is something that God has just been building and burning in my spirit every day, is that how do we come before God? How do we lay ourselves before him? He is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. And it is so important for us to get off of ourselves and to say, you know what, Jesus, you know what, God, you are the creator of the universe and I give my life, I give myself, I give my all to you today. So we just wanna ask you, are you ready to be a living sacrifice for Jesus? That is the greatest hope that we have. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, encouraging the next generation to get outdoors and get to know God. Author Aaron Lynham invites parents to help their children re-engage with the natural world by teaching them the connection between God and creation. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.